it's Dr. Chris at Venture Chiropractic. We're back with another Fitness Friday, and today we're going to talk about uh, inversion tables or teeter tables or tip ups or whatever we want to call them. Uh, I've had a lot of patients ask me about these in the last couple weeks in the office, so I figured let's just make a video about it, let everybody know uh, kind of what we think about them, what they're good for, and uh, help you make a better decision on whether it's right for you or not. So the biggest thing to remember with these inversion tables, these are the things where you flip yourself upside down after you hook your feet into them. They're good for some things, but they're kind of a one trick pony. They're really good for when we have an acute low back pain, disc type compression injury. If you've got that confirmed on an MRI and you know you need to make more space between uh, the, the bones in your spine where the nerve root exits, <clears throat> they can be great for you. But we gotta know how to use them properly. If you invert yourself, to all the way upside down right away, that might actually aggravate your pain, especially if your pain is already pretty bad when you try to use it. Most of the research that's been done on inversion has been done at five to 10 degrees of inversion. That means literally barely past horizontal, okay? So you want to just barely traction your back with these so it feels really nice, not painful. You can gradually uh, progress to more inversion, but again, we got some other ways to do that. What I tend to find is when people do use inversion tables, they use them for a very little bit, and then they sit over in the corner next to your treadmill maybe with a bunch of clothes stacked on top of it. And that's a really expensive clothes drying rack, okay? They can be three to $500 for a nice sturdy stable one. Uh, so what are some better options that you don't have to spend a lot of extra money for? Uh, we could use a bench, the edge of the bed, our countertop, anything like this. We're going to use a weight bench right here, and we could do some prone tractioning on our back, okay? So we could lay completely supported, carefully get into this position if you're in pain, get fully supported with our spine, and then literally just bend our legs and create a downward traction. You can see how I slid down slightly, but I'm not rounding my back. I'm not putting my back in that rounded position that can cause irritation on a herniated disc and I can either hold that position for several minutes or I can create a pumping motion by bending my knees and straightening them back out again so we can see how my back here is just moving slightly. The whole goal of this is to traction open the joints of your spine, take pressure off the discs, almost like an accordion or a slinky. You wanna think about that opening sensation. It should feel really nice when you're doing that. Once that's too easy, which it usually gets pretty easy within several days to a week of doing this, um, you're able to tolerate it really well. Let's up the ante a little bit. Let's do something that might actually make us more active or more fit or strengthen some of the muscles around our spine. So we could go to a pull-up bar. Again, we don't have much to purchase if we're using the edge of the counter or maybe a weight bench we already have or a wooden bench or the edge of the bed. Okay, all those things are easy, we already have them maybe. If we get a pull-up bar, Again, that's way cheaper. You can get the door frame style pull-up bars for uh, 30 bucks, okay? That's a fraction of the price of a tip-up or a, a inversion table. So what we wanna do is hang on to our pull-up bar, keep our feet on the floor, and just bend our knees. And we can create tension or, or spacing between that low back. It feels nice, it's a nice little stretch. If we don't have any pain, if we get ourselves out of lower back pain by doing either incremental holds like this, we can work our way up to longer time periods, 30 seconds to a minute. Well, then we might as well start working on our grip strength. Let's hang on tightly. Let's decompress the spine. Let's do some hangs from the bar, okay? Let's actually do either a dead hang, which can be really good for shoulder pain, back pain, can strengthen our back muscles. Or we can do an active hang, which means we relax all the way down and then use our muscles to pull up into that position. Relax them again, pull up into that position. All of these are significantly cheaper. Um, they tend to get used a little bit more in my experience. You don't need to set up a special space for an inversion table in your house and always keep that open. You can use the edge of your bed or the edge of a countertop weight bench like this at any time and the pull apart sits in the door frame doesn't bump anybody's head or anything like that try one of these out first if you're convinced that an inversion table just would feel awesome go ahead try one out and if you love it 
go, go ahead and keep using them. They are good. They do work for some conditions. But one trick ponies, don't get ridden a lot. Go ahead and let us know if you have any other comments uh, uh, or videos, topics that you want to see down in the comment section below. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell so you get every video from us. Remember, we are always out here at Venture Chiropractic to help you move better, feel better, be a better you. Everybody's moving, everybody's moving, everybody's moving, 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 moving. Everybody's moving, everybody's moving, everybody's moving, 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 and stop.